Hi, welcome to PosterCentral.com's video blog. I'm Pete Howard, and today we take on a couple of classic jazz vocalists. So for the occasion, I've put on my sports jacket. I guess when I do old big band, I'll have to put on a tuxedo or something. I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, as you can see, this is Tony Bennett, one of... Uh, it's a national treasure, right? I mean, let's face it, and um, uh, it's, a, it's a really nice concert poster, 1962, Miami, Florida. What's interesting about concert poster collectors is a lot of people put different, the collectors all put different weight in different areas of the poster. Some people really like to have, you know, the appearance of the poster is almost everything or everything. Others like condition, they're total condition freaks, you know, it's got to be mint or close to it and so forth. Um, I, you know, I count everything, appearance and everything's important, but I really like from a history standpoint, where a concert poster fell in an artist's career. That's really appealing to me. Um, you know, it's almost like, you know, a Louis Armstrong poster from, I was going to say the 60s, but of course he had Hello Dolly then. Let me just jump to this. This Tony Bennett concert poster interested me a great deal. The reason I picked it up is because it's from 1962, which is, as you know, if you're a Bennett fan or a music historian, vocalist, uh, collector, whatever, the year of his signature hit, I Left My Heart in San Francisco. So to me, this uh, is like a, you know, well, I Left My Heart in San Francisco concert poster as well as a Tony Bennett one. It's from the year. I mean, what other year could you possibly want in Tony's career that would be half as good? That's just my take on it anyway. And what's interesting is the album uh, was called I Left My Heart in San Francisco. It came out in the summer of 62, just a few months before the show. And it was uh, his highest charting album ever at number five, 149 weeks on the Billboard chart. Just an absolute monster uh, part of his career. And um, the single, I Left My Heart in San Francisco, number one hit, of course, right? Um, no, no. Okay, top five hit. I'm sorry. but No? Top ten. Okay, top ten hit. Come on, I Left My Heart in San Francisco. No. Top 20 hit? Barely. It peaked at number 19. I couldn't believe it. I thought, you know, you, you just think of that song as an absolute... Lifetime Achievement Award Grammy winning Evergreen and yet the uh, pop charts weren't being too kind to Tony which is weird because it was when rock and roll was really at its lull, right? 1962. But it's the kind of song obviously that took uh, a long time to grow. It just it grew and grew and it's still growing, isn't it? 40 years later or whatever. So, okay, so we go from Tony Bennett at a great career time in 1962 to a year earlier. I probably did a bad off-camera poster move there. Nothing here to perfect. I'm just being myself. Ella Fitzgerald, look at this beautiful robin's egg blue. This is just... I'm just over the moon about this poster. I mean, Ella herself is the bomb, as the current expression goes. They weren't using that in the 61. But this is um, just like... The, actually, I'm not sure if the Tony was a tour blank or not, but this is definitely a one-off music poster because um, Kleinan's Music Hall in Buffalo, New York did that. They developed their own posters and used them for just their shows. Isn't this gorgeous? And, and another thing you may not know is that Ella's management didn't use many concert posters through her career. They relied more on radio advertisements and newspaper ads. So posters were kind of... In fact, this may have been done just because Kleinens and Buffalo insisted on it, or the promoter Joe Rico, as you can see at the top. And thank goodness they did. Look at that stuff. I mean, it's just a beautiful poster. I'm moving in for a closer view. I'm sorry, Tony, that I didn't do that for you, but they're, they're both great posters. But... Look at that stylized, you know, the Ella has the spotlights and the stars and the, the rolling letters and again the beautiful, very unconventional for a poster, Robin's Egg Blue. And then if you looked at that, you saw a couple of details which I wanted to mention. Talk about timing in Ella's career. Pretty much everybody agrees that the songbook series that she did from the mid-50s to the mid-60s is her most respected and cherished body of work to this day. And look at, right here in this blue box it says... Featuring the songs of George Gershwin, Cole Porter, Rogers and Hart, and Irving Berlin. <laughs> Between those four, uh, you can't say names because there's really five names, aren't there? But four songwriting entities. Uh, the, n the number of familiar songs in the uh, Great American Songbook is astounding. So it's not only an Ella concert poster, but it's got those four killer composers. And she was still very much, I think a, a couple of years later, she put out the Gershwin Songbook very much in the middle of her songbook series, so it's just a gorgeous time for Ella. Great picture. What's interesting is when I first got this, I couldn't believe it was 1961, because you see at the bottom there, the top ticket price is $5, and it was like I had um, 
both post uh, hundreds or thousands of posters and pictures, and I had never seen five dollars on a ticket price as early as 1961. So I, you can be sure, I did my due diligence for my research. It turns out this was a a benefit for a Philharmonic Orchestra in Buffalo, New York. So for the benefits cause, they could afford to charge five dollars to the real high rollers, probably the first two rows or something. So it's always interesting to keep an eye on ticket prices when you're trying to date a poster. So there we have it, Tony and Ella, a couple of great, great posters from. Great American National Treasures, great singers. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for stopping by.